My name is Carol Nyambura Nganga, your health coach. It's another beautiful Friday, beautiful Friday where we zoom in on Carol, your health coach notebook. So I hope you have your notebook. I hope you are ready. I hope you have your pen, just like Carol. And we can have a conversation around the relationship between fertility or infertility to our mental health. So we are looking at what, is there any relationship? Is there any relationship between our, our fertility state, infertility state, and our mental health? Does our mental stability have anything to do with the fertility or the infertility? So welcome to today's session, and I'm glad to see um, Gentrix, Hask, Kenneth, Peter, and all those people who are still logging in. We will continue and we are recording, so we hope and we pray that we'll be able to upload this on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Rejuvenating Nature's Beam. As always, we are requesting you to uh, watch, uh, subscribe, and like and share with your friends. So for the new members, this is Carol, your health coach. And every Friday we meet here at 8 p.m. East African time, where we have this conversation, different conversations suggested by you or conversations depending on the challenges that we keep facing. I will request that you mute yourself or if it is possible, um, Douglas, you can mute everyone except me so that we can have, uh, so that we don't have the background noise. There's someone with some background noise. So I request that you, you, you mute if you can. If you can, kindly mute yourself so that we can be able to hear this convert. Great, now, yes, now it's very clear. Thank you very much. So now when we are talking, um, we had a session previously, um, I don't know whether it, it was, I think two weeks ago when we talked about infertility and we defined infertility in men and in women. And in a nutshell, in brief, I will talk about it in, in, in brief so that you can be able to see the relationship because I'm not able to just jump into the relationship without defining exactly what fertility and infertility means. So infertility um, is, a situation or a condition where a man and a woman or a man or a woman has uh, tried the process of conception for between six months and one year depending on their age for ages above 40 we say when they've tried conception for six months and above for ages below and the reason below 40, it is um, six, between one year, six, six months to one year. The reason why we are talking about age when it comes to fertility or infertility is because we have already identified that your age is very crucial in your fertility state. Because for a woman, as you age, um, of course, we have the reproductive age for both genders, but as a woman, as they age, we as women, as we age, we get to a point where the fertility is rendered, um, we, we become infertile just because of the natural process of menopause. Because when a woman goes through menopause, it means then that they are, they are infertile. So uh, that is why we are talking about the age for a man. Uh, when we were looking about infertility, we were looking at the infertility, we said that um, a man has a very interesting fluctuating reproductive age differences in his um in his teenagehood to adulthood up to up around 30 years a man is very very productive very very productive he's uh, sexually um, sexually active and very fertile in between ages of 30 to 45 around that time a man is con uh, busy with his um social expectations, um, financial obligations. There are different obligations for a man that lowers the, the fertility or the sexual energy for a man at that age. After 40, 45, 45 going up, a man now reverses and becomes again 
fertile. <coughs> Sorry. So when we are talking about fertility, for a woman, a fertile woman, she is able to produce one ova or sometimes two ovas from either of the ovaries or from both the ovaries once a month. A fertile woman is able to produce an ova uh, once a month and that is when we say she's ovulating. When the or when the ovulation process is happening, it is waiting for fertilization. If the no fertilization happens, then it means that she will have her menstrual periods. Um, for a man, when you're talking about fertility, um, a fertile man is able to produce enough quality sperms. I did not say just enough, I said enough quality sperms. At the same time, enough and quality semen. Semen is the fluid that carries the sperm direct to uh to the uh, for for fertilization uh, and it comes out uh during ejaculation so if you don't have quality sperms they'll not be able to swim as far as they are expected to go to the fallopian tubes where the fertilization takes place if the sperms are not um enough they keep dying you know it's like a race there is a very big serious race and only the mighty ones get to the end so if you don't have quality sperms, if you don't have quality semen, it will not be able to swim as fast. Most of them will die because in an ejaculation, you release millions of sperms. So when we're talking about a fertile man, he's able to produce these two things and be able to eject them out of his body through ejaculation during intercourse so that it can get to a woman's um, reproductive health. For a woman who is fertile, when the sperm comes in, it's able to fertilize the ova and the conception, the process of conception happens. When we're talking about infertility, we also looked at the different causes of infertility in men and in women. Um, in Just in passing, for men, we said that uh, the, the, the weight is plays a very big role in the fertility of a man. Um, when someone is overweight, obesity, it is actually a factor that is cutting across the genders. Because even for a woman, when they have excess weight, it means they have excess toxins, it means they have um, high cholesterol, it means their blood flow is not correct, it's, it means that there are so many challenges. So weight plays a very big role when it comes to fertility. Uh, we also looked at, when we were looking at the causes of infertility, we said some of them are natural, and there's nothing much we can be able to do. We can only correct them. We looked at the another cause of infertility. Uh, in men, it could be erectile conditions like erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction, we said that it is a condition where a man is not able to sustain an erection enough to be able to have a mature ejaculation. There are men experiencing premature ejaculation and there are, there are men experiencing delayed ejaculation. Those are two different conditions and I know we will have a conversation about them sometime soon. Another condition that could cause a man to have infertility is the prostate cancer, swollen or enlarged prostate gland. Um, a man's infertility can also be caused by low or hyper, it is either hypo or hyper activity of the thyroid function. The thyroid function in a man's life plays a very big role and even in a woman's life because the thyroid is plays a very big role in hormones production. Production and the process, the, um, you know, like sending the messages of the hormones. So if the thyroid function is not proper, there's a possibility that a man or a woman will be rendered infertile. So when we were looking at the infertility, we also said uh, that some of the other causes of infertility in women could be the reproductive health conditions that uh, women experience, something like fibroids, uh, growth, cysts, PCOS, endometriosis. They are different and quite diverse that we have looked at. If you missed those sessions, you can go to our YouTube channel and I'm sure you'll be able to find every session that I'm talking about. So today we are looking at, we already identified what is infertility. We already identified what are the causes. We also identified and said, what are some of the things that we can be able to do to, in, um, to increase fertility and it, for both genders. So today we are looking at this question that people keep asking Carol, their health coach. 
does my mental state my what is the relationship between my mental state and my state of being fertile or infertile at some point when we were talking about this discussion of fertility or infertility i mentioned the mental stability and even when we were looking at the sex drive we agreed that a man and a woman or both they need to be at a very good place in their minds for them to be able to have healthy sex drive for a man or a woman to be able to have a sex uh, um healthy libido their mind, mental state is very important why because one um the act of sexual intercourse is um a reaction of hormones and so if the hormones are not well balanced then it means then that it, you will not be able to have the desire the sexual desires you will not be able to have to sustain the desire to continue doing uh being in the activity so the hormonal in the hormonal the the hormonal function yes the hormonal function has a very high relationship with, with our mental state so when your mental state is in order uh i keep talking about the stress hormone called cortisol and i keep saying that it is one of the enemies that we have in our body that it is one of the devils that we cannot live without it is there it is produced and whenever we have stress whenever we are anxious whenever whenever we are in the negative um emotion so what cortisol hormone does it suppresses the production of these other good hormones when the good the bad the the bad hormone suppresses the good hormones production then it means that the consequences that the body will have is one like for example i'll use a simple example for a man testosterone hormone is the hormone the male hormone the male sexual hormone the male hormone that makes a man a man if a man has low testosterone they'll not be able to produce quality sperm quality semen they'll not be men um yes they'll not be men enough so that is why a man needs testosterone to be defined as a man if a man is stressed and when i'm talking about stress um it cuts across all the mental just assume that i am talking don't um take it like i am talking about all the mental health related issues not just stress mm -hmm. remember stress is just one of the mental health related issues so when i'm talking about uh, stress please see it as an overhaul of the mental health that you are talking about it could be depression it could be anxiety it could be panic attacks and all these things are related to our mental state there are so many conditions that i know we will soon have an expert we will invite an expert to come and engage we will engage him or her so that we can talk about the mental health but when now this man is um stressed out or he has um a, a mental condition that is suppressing the production of the proper sexual and reproductive hormones or even digestive hormones or hormones a happy hormone like the oxytocin then this man is not able this man's mind the brain is not able to send the message to the to the liver and to the thyroid to produce enough testosterone and then so it means then that if the testosterone is low the prostate gland is not able to produce enough semen quality semen the testicles the testicles are not able to produce a uh, quality sperm then it means then because the mind is already aware that there is no enough semen and the sperm in the store it will automatically be able to suppress an erection or give a man very low sex drive i hope i'm making sense what i'm saying that it is a circular movement it is a process so let me say this again let me repeat this again and if you have a question or a comment you can go to our chat box you can send a message there you can either send it privately or you can send where everyone is seeing so what i'm saying is i want to show that to indicate the relationship of our mental state to our fertility and i'm starting with men so when a man is stressed when a man is under pressure about something the brain 
is not able to send the message to the thyroid and to the liver to be able to produce enough testosterone or rather that stress uh, produces more cortisol the cortisol hormone is a stress hormone therefore suppressing the testosterone so when the testosterone and the happy hormones the oxytocin and the dopamine are suppressed the mind tells the body that we don't have um, enough stock enough um, energy enough uh, ability to be able to fatter, to be to fertilize an egg or to be able to perform sexually and so the mind tells the body that it is quite difficult or else it comes up with obstacles where why a man should be able to sustain an erection and that explains why whenever your mind whenever you're stressed whenever you feel low you're not you don't have uh, your sex drive really goes down you don't have the desire most of the time when now it's that time it's 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 um it's that moment when your brain has convinced the body that you cannot sustain an erection. The repercussions are you might have low self-esteem and wonder what is wrong with me as a man? What is wrong with me as a man? And then when you have low self-esteem, there is a possibility you will either de de deprive yourself of sleep or, and you see, it's not you, it's the brain that is recording these things and it's telling you then, Ah, you know your self-esteem is too low you can't even sleep well what kind of a man are you well uh, you know it is not you who is it is your subconscious mind that is telling your body and your soul and you're feeling so down and so uh it means then you have very disturbed sleeping patterns it means if you don't have low, uh, good sleeping hours then you will not be able to concentrate so you go to the office or wherever you really want to perform but your concentration is low you're feeling so frustrated you're angry at everyone and if you if you're not stressed if you if if you're not um sleeping well or well rested it means then even your digestive di digestive system will be affected digestive system you will either overeat which will add up to um, obesity, or you will have um, a condition where your appetite is super low, and then you will start losing weight mm -hmm. and you will not have enough nutrients to be able to produce this. So it becomes a cycle. And therefore, our mental state as men is very important, not only in fertility and to maintain fertility, but also in our every other area of our, uh, every, of our lives. So digestive system, thyroid function, liver function, every function of your body, your mental relaxation, stability, you being able to relax and to calm down is very important mm -hmm. now i look at the women before i before i move to the next level i look at the relationship of the mental state in women uh, when it comes to fertility and what is the cycle in a woman's life so assuming this woman uh, let's call her carol so carol is under mm -hmm. under stress carol is anxious carol is depressed carol is going through a, 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 a one of the many mental health related issues and her mind is not stable and the, the reasons why her mind is not stable is because of you know things that life has presented yet at the same time carol is one is a, is married to someone or carol would want to conceive and would want to bear a child so what happens when Kara is really stressed out, when she's down, when she's feeling all these things, what happens is that just like we talked about it in men, when you're stressed, your body um, gives out the stress hormone called cortisol. When the stress hormone called cortisol comes up, it lowers the production of progesterone and estrogen and all the other hormones related to a woman's reproductive digestive and every other process in their body so this woman when the the, the 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 hormones are lowered they interfere with one of the many processes that are define a woman's fertility they interfere with ovulation process and when the ovulation process is interfered with this woman will either have um excess menstrual periods very painful menstrual periods um 
some men, some women the menstrual period will just disappear and remember ovulation is is the process that is that um, summarizes or that defines fertility in a woman so when the hormones that are released the stress hormones suppress the hormones that activate ovulation then it interferes with a woman's chances of conception because remember a woman's unlike a man who can fertilize an egg anytime any day of the month or any day of the week a woman is not able to do that a woman has a limited time period when she is fertile so if 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 stress keeps interfering with a, a woman's life then it means then it will keep interfering with the ovulation and she will not be um able to conceive anytime soon so the the mental state just like uh, men in women's fertility and infertility is very very important and uh, when a woman is happy she's able to even function sexually when a woman is very stressed out she experiences dry vagina the uh, vagina because there is no lubrication she is just angry she is irritated she does not want anything and she will blame everything and everyone i don't know whether you've ever met these women who keep you know they're in the house and they just they just they just kick kick every cat dog anything that is passing all the plates are thrown and she's just so angry and this is as a result of some of the hormones that are being produced some of the hormones that are being produced are causing you know this woman to have a reflex action of being very irritated it is the same thing that happens to the fertility and the infertility of a woman so now we have seen the relationship between these two we also we now need to look at fortune unfortunately and god forbid someone goes to hospital and they are told they are infertile automatically the first thing that happens is there will be a mental instability they will feel anxious they will feel angry they will wonder why me they will wonder what have i done or what haven't i done especially if it is a couple and it is one of the partners or it is both of the partners who have a problem so the very first reaction to of most people is to be very angry and very confused that is human nature that is normal so then if god forbid that happens and you've gone to hospital you are a couple you are an individual and you've been trying to uh, conceive you really would want to uh, conceive and you don't know what to do what do then what then do you do or how how do how can you cope with it so that you can gain mental stability so the first thing you can do is accepting the situation it sounds so easy it is not easy it is not easy at all uh i speak from a little bit of experience because uh, in 2013 after i removed after i removed my reproductive system as a result of battling cancer cervical cancer it took me four years four clean years to to be able to face it and to accept that i am secondary infertile so when i'm telling someone to accept that situation i know it's not easy i know it's not easy but you can be able to you can be able to start this process by first of all talking to someone not everyone will understand your situation but you can talk to someone a professional if not you can talk to you can talk to your doctor and maybe they will be able to help you if you cannot find anyone look for carol your health coach look for me if i'm available i will talk to you i will listen to you i've had quite a number of people who we have been walking through this journey because infertility is not the end of it all it is not being told you are infertile is not the end and i think if you watched our video if you watch our video on youtube on infertility you will be able to see what i'm talking about so the first thing is talk to accept it like say yes this has happened i've been told i have low sperm count uh yes it's there 
what can I do? What is the next step that I can do? How can I, is there a possibility of me increasing this sperm count? Is there a possibility of me doing it? What, is, what can I do if I cannot sustain an erection? Or if I have premature ejaculation, what can I do? I know there's too much information out there. If you Google, you will find too much confusing information. And that is why we as Rejuvenating Nature's Beam are here for you so that we can provide you with the correct information on all these things that we're talking about and the most and in the most natural ways possible. So when you accept that, yes, we've been told we are infertile, yes, I've been told I have blocked fallopian tubes, is there anything I can do? Now the challenge comes in when you start talking to everyone who is near you. Not everyone means well, especially for us women. When there is a situation like this one and we go to like, for example, a chama or something and you tell this woman and this woman, they are, you will be given a thousand and one, um, what are they called? Um, my English is disappearing. Uh, you, will be <laughs> you will be given a thousand and one uh, solutions to your problem. So be careful the kind of solutions that you that you hear. You don't have to do everything. And you don't have to blame yourself. It is not your own doing. And even if it was, it has already happened. Let us focus on the future and let us see what we can be able to do. So point number two. Normally when someone gets something that is very traumatizing and they can they're not able to accept the situation they tend to they tend to um go to behaviors that are toxic for example a man has been diagnosed with low sperm count erectile dysfunction all these things you know or anything and because it's private and they don't want to talk to someone, they resolve to go and drink alcohol or start smoking or smoke weed and all these things, you know. Uh, some of these toxic behaviors that we engage in when we are not having proper mental state, then they will be able to even decrease the fertility. Because like, for example, the same cycle, um, imagine if you had low sperm count, then you resolved to go and drink. That alcohol makes the sperm count go even lower so be careful not to engage in toxic behaviors um when you engage in the in, in these top toxic behaviors you are not only ruining your reproductive uh, uh, processes you are ruining the other processes so you after you talk to someone you can find a solution because there are so many solutions out here we can be able to do it when you accept and then if you have a partner talk talk to each other talk to each other and encourage each other and then also know that you're not alone there are so many people out here who are really suffering the same way you could be suffering so yes there are solutions to infertility and yes your mind plays a very big role and it's up to you you are the boss you are the boss of your mind you are your bosses you are the boss of your mind so please take um take take charge and be sure to do to be in control of your mind. Um, I would want to look at the messages that we have. Uh, thank you so much, Carol, for bringing this topic. I was so eager to attend. In men, still, how does one uh, does use of drugs like alcohol affect the production of quality spams? I have not even read that one. Awesome. I've, I think I've already mentioned. Um, remember that. The production of the sperms and the semen is dependent on the testosterone. When you take too much alcohol, when you smoke cigarette, uh, you interfere with the liver function, with the thyroid function, which are very important in the production of the reproductive, um, reproductive hormones. So um, I am sure I have answered your question because they will suppress the liver function, thyroid function, and suppress even your immunity so you will not, your body will not be able to produce enough sperms and not just enough but enough and quality sperms and semen uh, great information carol i will refer mm -hmm, i will refer my cousin to you i've been struggling and have tried oh okay fine yes you can refer you can refer them to me and i will be able to help to help where i can 
but they also need to be willing they must be willing for us to be able to start this journey it's not for the faint-hearted but yes it is doable we have been able to work with quite a number of people and i'm sure if you log into my facebook account carol nganga you will be able to see testimonies and i'm so excited i'm so excited i'm so excited that our book my first book is out yes my first book is out and from next week we will be able to pre-order we will be able to send it to wherever you are i know team uganda yeah peter yes ah team uganda was number one today so uh team uganda hi carol we are team uganda yeah team uganda i love you i love you so much i see um oh my goodness i see jackie from the uk amazing 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 i see dante from the us my goodness you guys are amazing so team kenya team kenya you're well represented um someone else is saying hi carol could you give me your whatsapp number as we, uh, okay okay fine my whatsapp number is uh plus two five four seven one one six two one four sorry zero seven one one six two one five six three oh seven one one six two one five six three how much is the book yeah the book is going for only ten dollars can you imagine can you imagine the book is going for only ten dollars and we'll be able to provide you with information so whoever logs in first next week whoever comes with a friend will get a copy of this book Team, we always appreciate the person who gets here number one. Yes, Team Uganda. Oh, Kenneth, amazing. You guys are just, you're just a guy. You, you're amazing. And um, I'm not seeing your team leader today. Uh, so you tell him today he's, um, he's missing in action. So as always, I see we have five minutes uh, to wind up. As always, we appreciate the first person who logs in. And today, Peter Kusemererwa from Uganda was the first participant. Yay! So we clap for you. We appreciate you. We honor you for keeping time. And always, 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 our digital, our, our host for the meetings, the one who prepares our beautiful posters, the one who reminds me sometimes he calls me like even 30 minutes before to, to remind me, Douglas douglas we appreciate you we honor you we really are appreciative of every work that you're doing may the good lord bless you may the good lord expand you he makes the posters he re he records the meetings he edits the meetings he uploads them on, on on our youtube channel douglas god bless you god bless you and may you be expanded in ways that you cannot believe i want to thank each one of you I want to thank each one of you who logged in today and I want to thank you for your participation. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, fine. There's someone else here again who is asking for my number. I will give it out as we continue. Uh -huh, so we are number one. Yes, yes, yes. You guys are number one. You guys are number one. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, hi, Carol. I want to talk to you privately later. Yes, 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 yes. Sure, you can talk to me. Um, my contact. Uh -huh. There's someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are number. Yes. Team Uganda, you are representing. I really appreciate you. Yes, you guys are number one. We appreciate you. We honor you. And I believe that you guys are the, will be the first people to get, uh, the first country to get my book. I know, I know you guys will be the first country to get my book. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing. So um, I allow, allow me to wind up, say thank you, appreciate you. And even if we are not seeking to be fertile sexually, uh, to reproduce, we need to, to maintain a, a healthy mental state. We need to maintain a happy, happy, smiling face, just like mine. <laughs> There's someone today who asked me if I ever get angry. I rarely get angry uh, because I am very conscious and I try as much as possible to keep calm, keep happy. And I feed my heart and my soul and I give myself a break. So please also keep smiling, be happy and you will be surprised the amazing things that will happen. Your skin will be glowing like mine. You can tell mine is glowing. Eh? <laughs> Thank you. So as I wind up, appreciate, I appreciate you. My contact, my contact is plus two five four, plus two five four, 
7116215163 you can also reach me on facebook i am carol nganga please follow me on facebook i always post something juicy i always i'm always teaching something there uh you can please 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 subscribe to our youtube channel rejuvenating nature's beam rejuvenating nature's beam and we will be able to keep showering you with much information we are on twitter we are on instagram as our nature's beam our nature's beam i am also carol nganga on twitter on instagram and you never know some of these gifts will be coming they keep coming on our social media platforms and you could be one of the lucky people who will be able to read my book as among the very first people you know uh health is very important so my book is called glass of life i will give you a sneak preview very soon so yes all those people who have who had asked for my number i'm sure now you have my number and you can text me on whatsapp i might not be able to respond to your calls but your your whatsapp messages will always always be answered even if not promptly but every time when i have an opportunity i always respond uh yes moses kindly text me on my text me on my whatsapp number as i have indicated god bless you as always i love you and i'll see you on friday at 8 p.m east african time as we have a different topic of the day i am your health coach carol nyambura nganga and we get healthy and stay healthy bye bye